Okay, uh, I'm Mashit and I've been an uh, intern in the conversational AI team and I've been working on the uh, automatic speech recognition uh, sub project. Um, um, during my uh, internship, I've been work on uh, two components in the ASR project. The first one was uh, mostly um, research approach that we um, kind of explored the uh, state of the art uh, unsupervised speech recognition model that was provided by Facebook uh, research. And in the second part, I got to uh, work with the reference implementation that was implemented before I uh, joined Vector. And I'll get into the details of this too. Um, so, the, um, as I mentioned, uh, the unsupervised speech recognition model has been recently provided and it has some uh, major benefits if we can go forward with this approach in speech recognition because it actually um, has been proven that coming up with uh, proper data sets uh, can be really expensive and difficult, especially uh, today we have tons of data sets um, that include English uh, language, both audio and transcription, paired data sets, but uh, on some other language, languages that have lower resources, we are facing this issue of training speech uh, training robust speech recognition models. So either the, there should be the um, um, ability and the resource to come up with uh, such uh, paired data sets, or we can uh, get, um, get to some um, um, speech recognition models like this one that actually can uh, work and be trained on unpaired, uh, unpaired data sets. Um, so uh, this model that has been uh, provided has been uh, working with uh, two components. Uh, the first one is actually a wave to wick uh, two model that uh, plays a role as a, uh, it kind of um, generates an audio representation that then can be used as an input for a GAN model that is trained to uh, do the whole transcription part. And I will discuss the details shortly. Uh, in this image, you can actually see uh, how the whole uh, model, the whole pipeline is actually working. So we have two inputs into this architecture. The, the first input is audio and the second input is text. And so, as I mentioned before, the good news is that we, these uh, two sets of data do not necessarily need to be paired. Um, the first pipeline here is actually uh, pre-processing our audio data and the second one is our text data. And here the uh, star of the show here is actually the GAN model that uh, takes uh, audio and text. And after being trained, finally, the generator is able to comes up uh, is able to come up with the uh, phonemes for our transcription. Um, so, in, in the pipeline to pre-process the audio, we um, need to remove silences and then we use the wave to vec 2 model to come up with the embedding for uh, audio uh, kind of um, representation for the audio input. And then we need to uh, detect the audio segments that correspond to a single phoneme. And after we have all the data, we can use it as, use it as the input to the GAN model. Uh, the second part of the pipeline is actually preparing text. So we can use um, any um, text corpus model, corpus, and then after uh, turning words into phonemes and for uh, being on the kind of safe side, we uh, add some silence tokens and we have the whole text um, data set prepared to be used in our uh, GAN model. But let's see how. Um, so uh, 
probably you have uh, worked with GAN models before and you know that there is a generator and a discriminator in those models and the generator is kind of trying to um, um, and it starts from a point that uh, to, to output uh, samples um, similar with a distribution similar to those ones that the real uh, data actually has and the discriminator um, is uh, supposed to distinguish between the real data distribution and the ones that are kind of fake and um, produced by the generator. And in the whole training uh, process, the generator and discriminator are uh, involved in this minimax game so that the generator finally can fool the discriminator with, uh, with its um, well qualified generated data. So in our model, actually the goal was that, okay, here we have the uh, input audio and here we have the input text. So we, the model looks at the text as the real data distribution. And we uh, want to kind of train the generator in a way that it can output phoneme sequences that uh, seem similar to the text, the unpaired text data that we uh, in, um, had as an input to the discriminator. Um, so what we finally do uh, did actually is that we trained the model using Libre speech data sets and we used uh, 10 hours of audio from the trained sets of Libre speech. And as the unpaired text data set, we used the language model corpus of Libre speech. Of course, not all of it because I guess uh, the whole data set includes about uh, 400 million sentences, uh, which is a lot to process. So we kind of use 10% 10 10 of it, resulting in 40 million sentences. And after that, we trained the model. Uh, the results that we got uh, compared to the ones that the paper had uh, reported um, are in terms of word error rates are a little bit higher actually. But uh, if you look at the amount of data that we have uh, used and uh, the amount of data that actually they have used, we can see that, okay, according to the decrease in the in this size of data sets, it can the word or the final word error rate can be an acceptable one. And if um, we, for example, wish uh, to um, reach their uh, precision and the accuracy, yeah, we can work with higher amounts of data and get there. Um, but um, aside from the whole um, reproducing part, um, as you saw through the whole uh, um, architecture of the model and the pipeline, you could see that there were a lot of modules involved and uh, different uh, processes needed to be done either in the training phase or the data pre-processing. And uh, this um, kind of made us in a position to um, encounter some challenges. Uh, especially that, um, as you have experienced, uh, there are in when you work with some of the uh, research-based uh, repositories or pa uh, papers, and you want to reproduce them, there are some data that are missing, or um, the documentation is not um, clarified, or um, you kind of need to work around um, different types of. Um, issues and um, tackle some problems. So for us, um, aside from the documentation part, the uh, major issue with reproducing was actually getting, uh, kind of figuring out all the uh, dependencies and installing installing them on vector cluster and um, kind of solve some incompatibilities between them and all that stuff. Um, and um, so to um, and our goal was also um, so after we reproduce it ourselves, we wanted to provide a um, tool or a path or um, some a set of instructions to enable 
um, other people, especially the participants of a conversational AI project to be able to use this on their own data if they wish to. Um, so um, I looked into different uh, solutions to kind of uh, work around the, this whole dependency issue. For example, in their paper, um, they suggested that they had used um, um, some other set of tools, for example, instead of a call the decoder, which requires a lot of, um, um, let's say, a, a lot of packages, they had used a um, simple transformer language model, but uh, again, the data that they provided wasn't sufficient enough. And um, so the solution that I uh, finally uh, could came up with to actually get uh, everything work together was to use a Docker image and set up a singularity container on the vector cluster. Um, and um, recently, so uh, we've kind of realized that, okay, although we have uh, set up a documentation page and we have the container, which is a huge one, by the way, um, we kind of need to simplify this even more. And I've been working on to uh, put everything uh, in a more organized uh, shape uh, into a Jupyter notebook and it's uh, still ongoing and there are some issues that need to be uh, resolved. Uh, but if we can do that, we can have a better uh, presentation of this whole unsupervised um, model. And um, with uh, some slight changes, we can actually get to use uh, multiple data sets for training. And um, also the data and the checkpoints and everything are available on the cluster as well for now. Um, so the second component of the ASR project which was actually the first, um, it, which was actually the starting point of the ASR project was the reference implementation that uh, was implemented by the uh, previous uh, ASR team. But uh, since we uh, kind of started to present the whole thing to the uh, sponsors, um, so I kind of got to work on this as well. So to give an overview on this, uh, the whole idea has been to kind of uh, provide an open source software that can do speech recognition, especially that um, most of the businesses are um, have some use case for speech recognition, let's say for uh, transcribing the um, customer calls or documenting some recorded uh, documents and all that stuff. And also, uh, since we are working on a neural agent assistant as the other part of the conversational AI, um, this uh, has been in mind that, so we can kind of put these two together as, a, an, as an end to end conversational AI pipeline. So the reference implementation, what it has been, uh, has been a Dockerized Python application with uh, different modules that I will mention shortly. And it has, uh, it, it kind of revolves around the Flask server and there are some endpoints. There has been a um, front end application implemented for this using a uh, Stremlet that provides uh, both uh, live transcription and recorded audio transcription. And the core of the speech recognition models used in this application uh, has been the models provided by SpeechBrain and through the, uh, and some of them that are actually um, uh, served uh, on Hugging Face Hub. Uh, you can see the architecture of the system in this image, as you can see, so we have the dockerized services, we have the uh, message broker that implements a queue for us, so the server would not be uh, overloaded instantly and it can uh, respond to requests one by one. And we have uh, the a database here. We have some monitoring modules here, such as Grafana and Prometheus. And um, the core of this uh, architecture had been implemented before. And um, the recent uh, works that needed to be done 
was actually doing some modifications to these uh, parts. For example, one of the issues was that, okay, the Flask server, uh, although we, uh, claim, we had claimed that this is a fully dockerized uh, service, but there were some issues that uh, forced us to have Flask um, backend as a separate service and not inside a Docker container. And um, those uh, issues uh, got resolved finally. And one of the um, things that um, prevented us from having Flask integrated with others was that, um, so I mentioned we used Hugging Face and Speech Brain, and there were some uh, non-customizable configuration in the Speech Brain package that um, prevented us from having a smooth Flask uh, server uh, running um to kind of uh, serve uh, on the speech brain models and uh, i resolved those issues and made some other changes um, to make the whole application more robust such as error handling and more language support and um, other few changes um, and yes that's the end of it and thank you all for listening if you have any questions i'd be happy to answer